I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve this chemical transformation using electron pushing arrows. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and see if you can come up with the mechanism. And make sure to stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. The first step in this reaction is going to be nucleophilic attack from this benzylamine using the lone pairs of electrons on nitrogen. Now importantly, you've probably seen reactions where you can open epoxide rings by attacking on the backside with a nucleophile. However, in this case, with what's called epichlorohydrin, the first step is actually going to be a substitution reaction at this alkyl chloride position to kick off the chlorine. This leaves our epoxide ring intact, and we have now appended the nitrogen-containing species to the end of this molecule, and now it is going to be positively charged, and what can happen is the chloride, which was kicked off at this step, can come and deprotonate to make a neutral species where the electrons have now been placed back on our nitrogen, giving us our epoxide ring and now our neutral nitrogen species for our next step to occur. Now importantly, in this reaction, you were told that you had potassium carbonate. And if you recall, anytime you dissolve an ionic compound into uh, water, for example, they separate into their component ions. This means that there will be two potassium ions and also two carbonate ions. And remember, carbonate is a twice negatively charged species, which basically looks like this. So CO3 with a two minus charge. And this base can now act as a nucleophile, which will actually come in and do that backside attack to open our epoxide ring. And this is going to give us a new molecule where our ring is going to start to take shape. So since this oxygen attacked here, what will happen is now we have our O minus at this position, which kicked up from the epoxide. This is also an oxygen, and remember, it is attached to the other rest of this CO2 minus molecule, so it looks like this. And on the other end, we have our amine and alkyl chain, so we will leave that remaining intact, and it will look just like this. Now, importantly, remember in this step, we generated hydrochloric acid, so what can happen is hydrochloric acid can come and be deprotonated to form an alcohol at that position. So now we're going to have what looks like a carboxylic acid, and now we still have our negatively charged oxygen at this position, and then the rest of the molecule looks the same. Now importantly, this nitrogen contains a lone pair of electrons, which can do a nucleophilic addition at this carbonyl carbon, which is gonna be very electronegative because it's attached to three different oxygen atoms. And this is actually gonna do the classic addition elimination reaction where those pi electrons will kick up to oxygen, but then come back down and actually kick off hydroxide as a good leaving group. It's also gonna to serve to close this ring. So we would have one, two, three, four, five, six atoms as part of that ring. And that six member ring, just to keep things simple, I'm actually gonna draw as a chair conformation, which you've likely seen before when talking about cyclohexanes. So for example, this is what that molecule now looks like. And we still have our CO double bond at this position. And the nitrogen still has that benzyl group on it as well. So now that we've completed these steps and I'm out of room, I'm gonna start with this molecule after we have worked through these electron pushing arrows to get to this stage where we have made this molecule. So now that we've worked out the synthesis of this molecule, we can complete the rest of the mechanism to get to our final product. So notice that this oxygen is still around with several lone pairs, which can do a nucleophilic attack at an electrophilic carbon position, specifically the one that is contained at this position. So this is a very electrophilic carbon, and this is going to receive an attack from the electrons on the negatively charged oxygen. And this is gonna kick up the pi electrons to make this oxygen be negative, thus conserving our charges. This is also gonna make a fused ring system. So now we're gonna have a five-membered ring and a six-membered ring that are fused together. Now this new fused ring system, which you often see in Diels alder reactions, is actually gonna contain a five-membered ring with an oxygen at the top of that, and it's gonna be fused to a six-membered ring. And that product looks like this. So most of the molecule is the same. Our nitrogen still has our benzyl group on it. Here we have an oxygen coming off that is now negatively charged. 
And remember that new fuse ring system is going to contain an oxygen at the top of the point and that gives us our chair confirmation showcasing the fuse ring. The next step is going to be these electrons which are now there are three lone pairs on this oxygen are going to come down and actually kick off these electrons and place them on this oxygen. And in doing so this removes our fused ring system to where we only have that five ring species now. So where there are five members of this ring just like in this position and notice that this nitrogen is three atoms away from an oxygen. Similarly, one, two, three atoms away from an oxygen. And two carbons away, we have our O minus. So all that remains to happen is that this O minus group that is here just needs to be protonated, which is actually what happens in the next step because we have now generated most of our final product and all that remains is for a proton source to come and protonate to make this final alcohol giving us our final product. And there you have it. I'd love to hear how you did as a comment down below. Additionally, for next week, I'd like you to give this mechanism a try. See if you can come up with the mechanism for this chemical transformation. And to see what I came up with, make sure that you're subscribed so that you never miss another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you in next week's video.